The MFA Book Arts program at Alabama is the first in the country, and we've been in existence for uh, about 35 years now. Book arts, because it's such a broad term that includes so many different practices, you know, including papermaking, calligraphy, letterpress, printing of all kinds, uh, book binding, there are so many different ways that um, people can be working um, either under the umbrella that we would call book arts or kind of on the periphery. Uh, the way that we're teaching book arts here, we are using those skills um, to produce work that is not necessarily all traditional. Um, we're forward thinking even while we're using traditions that date back for long periods of time. We're used to books that are often bound with uh, glossy papers, maybe hardcover books that incorporate some book cloth on them, but here we encourage students to use beautifully formed handmade sheets of paper for their books, um, really, really nice book cloths. So I think that um, tactility plays a part in that and also the way that the students are learning to design the books um, is going to be sort of in stark contrast to something that you might find that's commercially published. Obviously, there's a, a lot of technology in our lives right now. And what I've been seeing in the time that I've been at Alabama and in this program is a greater enthusiasm and interest of students in something that is really tangible and they can hold in their hands in a meaningful way. People really want to use their hands and they want to understand the physicality of materials. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with electronic technologies and electronic books, but when you hold something that has been you know, crafted by someone who has considered it from you know, a moment of conception and then made all the paper, set all the type, maybe even composed all of the words and done the binding, what you have in your hand is something really pretty special. And I think that just sort of the weight of that is conveyed in the objects. In our first semester, they're just learning about um, how the press works, how to mix their ink, how to set type by hand. But then in their second semester, they start to make books. When they start making books with me, I have them make mock-ups. They are having to take an idea, take it from an abstraction, maybe taking it from there to just a, a sketch, and then taking it into the book form. And you can't know how a book is working until you actually turn it into a three-dimensional object. So when we have a class where everyone comes prepared with their mock-ups, we're able to, as a group, kind of workshop their ideas, um, have a look at how their structure is working, talk about different choices that they could make that would be more successful, and in the end, kind of move their book forward in a positive way. Students in the paper making classes learn the history and traditions of the craft. They study both the Eastern and Western uh, paper making techniques, and they also learn uh, innovations and developments in the field. Uh, that sort of spurred out of the papermaking renaissance from the 1950s. So things like painting with pigmented pulp and advanced pigmenting techniques. Our students come from a lot of different backgrounds. We have had writers, we have um, artists obviously, We've had, we had a few years ago somebody who was a master woodworker who came into our program. We have had people who studied philosophy, you know, just across the board, which also I think makes our program a really exciting place for students because there are so many ideas um, that are being tossed around. I think because, because they're learning not just these individual um, skills, they're thinking about books in a cohesive way. And I think that they're also thinking about form and function. They're thinking about sequence. They're thinking about hierarchy of information. So in that way, I guess we're, we're, we're thinking about that whole object and not just about like, all the various practices that it takes to create that object. Through the studio courses that are part of our curriculum, the students um, really gain um, problem-solving skills through some of the challenges that are presented in, to them through the courses. Um, but in addition to that, um, we teach them a lot of professional practices. Simple things like developing a CV, writing about their art, 
Um, they're taking away a lot of hand skills, but they're also equipped to enter the job market after they uh, leave the program. I think that books are an intersecting point for so many different people, for so many different um, fields. I personally, in my own work, I like to collaborate, and I collaborate with people who are outside of the arts. I collaborate with biologists, I collaborate with musicians, to make things that are outside of my own experience and to broaden my world and hopefully broaden the world of the people who look at those books. So I, I think of books as a place where people can meet. It's a fertile, it's fertile ground. The University of Alabama has been a really supportive place. I feel that um, I'm in this really privileged position of having incredibly interested and excited students to teach, and that always makes teaching, you know, fantastic. The, I can't tell you uh, enough about, about how enthusiastic and energetic they are and how rewarding it is to see them um, go through the program and then get out into the world doing what they want and sharing Alabama book arts with other people. <laughs> They're all over the place. <laughs>